Hi everyone, Lisa Haven here, and I have to be honest with you, as the election sits right now, things are not looking good for President Trump. I am hopeful, however, that he is going to get in, but I have to be honest about where we are really at right now. And I really wanna address the question, does the president have any trick up his sleeve? Can he do anything? Uh, what's going to happen with regards to recounts? What's going on in Pennsylvania and these kind of issues? Because if not, we are literally headed a million miles miles an hour into straight up communism. I mean, ever since President Trump got into office, like even before he got into office, the mainstream media, Google, George Soros organizations, leftist radicals, big tech organizations, all worked jointly together to make President Trump look like an idiot, to, to make him look like a racist, to make him look like a xenophobic, anything that they could do to trash the president and his name, they did. And they used their propaganda so much so that now now here we are in the U.S. election, and I don't even want to get into how much election meddling there has been. But for starters, let's go and look at the current situation as it sits. This is as it sits right now, and this is on CNN Politics. And you can see we still got a couple of states that need to be called, but the only way that President Trump can win right now is if he takes Pennsylvania, North Carolina, which he's got North Carolina, I believe, uh, Georgia and Alaska, and of course, either Nevada or Arizona. That's how it would have to go. But Joe Biden right now is ahead in all of them except for two. Now, with that, is there any... Uh, uh, can we do recounts? What's going to happen? Well, as many of you know, there's already a recount that President Trump is asking for in Wisconsin, and he's within his rights to do that. Take a look here. This is on, here's what Wisconsin recount law says and what it means for President Trump. This is on law and crime. Uh, right now, President Trump is within the means to request a recount, and he has already done that. Uh, and this kind of talks about the rules, the laws, and all of that. But based on the current projection, 1% or less margin and the laws on the book state basically President Trump has every right to ask for, and, and and to get that. So he's definitely asking and getting that recount there in Wisconsin. But what about other states, uh, depending on how they fall? Well, let's look at some of the states. And this is on CNN, presidential election recount rules, what you need to know. Uh, but basically, it kind of gets into some of what the laws are here in, in Nevada, right? They can ask for one if a candidate requests it. In Arizona, it's automatic, okay, if there are fewer than 200 votes or a 0.1% margin, candidates cannot request a recount. So it's all depending on margins and whatnot. So there are some of these states. Michigan, it says automatic for a margin of fewer than 2,000. Candidates can also request, they can request a recount. Pennsylvania here, we have automatic for less than 0.1%. 5% point difference. That seems like a very possible margin. So if they have that, they can request that there in, in Pennsylvania. Georgia, as many of you know, candidates can request a recount. This is going to be recounted from what we're hearing, and I believe they may have called that. Uh, in fact, check out this article on msn.com. Votes in Georgia will likely be recounted, and that was as of 11 hours ago. So it's possible so far we've already got recounts in Georgia and recounts in Wisconsin, and then North Carolina candidates can request a count there. So that kind of gives you an idea on uh, if we can ask for recounts. Sometimes they can change, but a lot of the times they don't in those recounts. But there's a big question over in Pennsylvania because as many of you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in Pennsylvania, which is which is where President Trump could have a quote unquote trick up his sleeve. But this is all directed on this article by ZeroHedge.com. Why Trump will triumph in Pens Pennsylvania litigation. As many of you know, there's litigation going on there in Pennsylvania. Lots of crazy, suspicious stuff going on. But the bottom line of kind of, this is a great article to read to kind of give you an idea of it all. But the bottom line is here, right? The U.S. Constitution grants state, state legislators the exclusive right to prescribe the time, place, and manner on holding elections and to direct the appoint of the electors. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court didn't just say Act 77 is unconstitutional. It rewrote the act itself by judicial fiat, creating new 
new rules for time, place, and manner of holding elections. And in doing so, the state Supreme Court violated the United States federal constitution, right? And that's the real case that's going on there in Pennsylvania. The U.S. Supreme Court is going to rule that the state Supreme Court, or they could, right? But they are going to rule that the state Supreme Court violated the U.S. Constitution and the state Supreme Court's ruling is going to be overturned and the votes that arrived after 8 p.m. on election day will be discarded. And on that basis, if all that goes that way, then Trump will win Pennsylvania or could win Pennsylvania, uh, will according to the Zero Hedge article there. But that's the trick that President Trump could have up his sleeve. As we know, uh, they've already passed some litigation, but um, the sheriff there is, is refusing to enforce some of what's already been enforced there. But that's the bottom line. They they stepped out of line. The, the state Supreme Court violated the Constitution, thereby President Trump could have those votes thrown out. So this is definitely a Trump card. But what is terrifying, right, on top of all that, is if they gain not only Joe Biden as president, if they gain that, and on top of that, if they gain the Senate, we're literally screwed here in America, especially if he uh, gets his tax plan past. I mean, his tax plan is really going to target anyone uh, over, say, 400,000 is going to be your small business owners. And he's talking about hitting them with massive taxes to the point where a lot of our small business owners would have to sell their houses in order to survive or cut their pay to go under that market or massively increase their prices to you and I, the American people, to the point where we're all screwed. Right, but this is going to destroy because it does nothing but bring in straight up socialism into the United States of America. But here is the 2020 Senate election interactive map, and this is on 27 to win. Uh, but this is kind of how it sits now. Cur well, current sits, excuse me, this is how it sits now. We have Democrats at 47, uh, Republicans 53. And as of 2020, they're still tallying everything. We have Democrats at 49, Republicans at 46. This is gonna go up, obviously, but it all hinges right now now on Georgia, who's going to get that seat in Georgia, which could flip the Senate. That would be terrifying if that happened. But let's go on over to the House. Democrats, and this is on Politico, Democrats have kept the House, but are unlikely to expand their majority. They're definitely not expanding their majority in the House, but they're likely to keep it. Uh, but with that, I want to show you on top of all of that, uh, I have been saying that they have been attacking the president from day one. And right now, let me show you what they're doing to him on Twitter, because this is important. And I'm just going to scroll through his Twitter feed here so you could see what we're talking about. Here we have it blocked by Twitter, blocked by Twitter, blocked by Twitter. I mean, you can click it and view what he says, um, but look how many times Twitter has blocked him just over this election season. I mean, this is massive massive, massive. And they're not even like um, things that would have to do. I mean, any vote that came in after election day will not be counted. This is the kind of stuff that they are censoring. But let's compare that to what they're doing to Joe Biden because I think it's only fair, right? So let's go on over to Joe Biden's page. And here's Joe Biden's page, right? Nope, not one, not one. None of it has been censored. Do you see the difference here? Do you see the difference? Everything is left out for Joe Biden and they allow him to go and they allow him to put him at the forefront, but not President Trump. That's censorship of one political side, but not the other. And a lot of the American people who don't pay attention to this stuff are like, oh, President Trump's a liar because Twitter says he's a liar, but hey, Joe Biden's allowed to thrive. Look, he's not lying on his feet. And it isn't about that. It's all about censorship of the masses. And then what I have to show you, and this is going to drop your jaw, listen to what she has to say yet again about President Trump. Take a listen. So many people have said to me, and perhaps some of you along the way, what damage do you think that Trump will do between losing the election and the swearing, the inauguration of Joe Biden? Maybe you didn't phrase it quite that way, but that's how I heard it. And we knew that he would be up to mischief, separate and apart from uh, de trying to destroy the credibility of our elections, which we criticize other nations for doing, and now with uh, all enemies, foreign and domestic, uh, making assault on our elections. Well, we have one domestic. 
Oh, oh, well, we have one domestic, which means she just called President Trump a domestic enemy of the state. And this isn't the first time she's done it, right? She called GOP members, basically Republicans, President Trump and his campaign, domestic enemies of the state. And here she is again, because President Trump is calling out the integrity of our elections. Quite frankly, I think we should just vote in person, period, and have it done at that. And then have to have a physical, physical physically be there and give give enough time to do that because they have completely messed with this mail-in voting above and beyond where it needs to be. And and she even admitted that there's um, election integrity is called into, you know, the, the integrity of elections internationally uh, is messed up, right? A lot of international elections. But right now, from what I'm seeing, really questioning what's going on with our election, right? It's in our face anymore. And then they want to tell us it's not happening. I mean, really? There's so much going on. You have to get on over to Restricted Republic. But really, a lot of people are questioning what the heck is going on with our election here in the United States of America, right? But this is the kind of stuff that she is literally saying about our country. Look, folks, we're heading into socialism. Kamala Harris came out the other day and made it very clear that we are all going to catch up and be on equal footing. And she shows everybody at the top of a hill. No, everybody's not at the top. We're all at the bottom of the hill as little peons with them at the top telling us what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, and all of that. And then there's a lot of Americans here in the United States of America who have no idea what they're vouching for. I want free this, free that, free this, free that. Okay, I'll vote for it. And, they, and then they vote for it, but wait, they don't realize is it all comes out of our paycheck and the free really isn't free to the level that they're talking about. I mean, here in Arizona, they're about to pass, you know, it seems like it's going to go through Prop 208, which literally takes on top of everything that happened with the pandemic, small business owners have now been hit with an additional 3.5 state tax on top of the 4.5 state tax. They're now paying 8% tax, 8% small business owners. And then on top of that, if Joe Biden gets in and, 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 and pushes his tax, they're screwed, literally screwed. And, we're, and, and talk about socialism and breadlines is coming. It's definitely coming. And on top of that, that's like slapping people when you're down, blah, blah. you know? It's just insanity and it always falls down to the little guy. We are always the one that get higher prices on everything when their taxes are raised. You know, it's just, an, it, it's, it's ludicrous. And people have no idea, the sleeping ones out there. But hey, we got free stuff. And when you get your free stuff and it's all done and the plan's put out, oh, it'll be there for you, all right. But that job of you making good money is not going to exist anymore. But hey, don't worry, our congressional leaders will exempt themselves out of all of it and their children's 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 will rule forever, amen, because us little peons can never catch up or never get our names out there big enough to do an election because, you know, we're taxed to death. Uh, I'm literally, I, I am really worried for the United States of America, especially if something happens with the Senate, right? We really got to watch what's going on there. Uh, in Georgia and, and other places and make sure that Republicans still have the Senate. Anyhow, I want to encourage you guys, please don't forget uh, to check out my partner at noblegoldinvestments.com. Uh, if you have not converted your 401k into something back by uh, gold, silver, and precious metals, I want to encourage you guys to do that. Because uh, right now, if you do, they are giving away this um, uh you can see this coin here, but it's one tenth ounce gold coin. So check them out and give them a call today at noblegoldinvestments.com and you can see the number on the screen. Anyhow, I love all of you. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Lisa Haven, signing out.